people can see my cheese it bowl. Your cheese it bowl. Check one, two, check. Hey. Well, hey, listeners, and a special hey, hi, hello to all you patrons out there. Special reminder at the top of the episode that you can always join our Patreon for just a dollar, two dollars, maybe even five dollars. Shout out to our new patron, JL. Um, Lord, nope, nope, butchered that. Let's try that again. Shout out to our new patron, Jaleel. Jaleel, please let me know if I'm mispronouncing your name. Jaleel, we welcome you to the Side by Side Podcast Patreon. And all of you out there have a, um, what is it, a, a, a evergreen invitation, if you will. So remember, you can find the link to the Patreon in the show notes. Now let's get started with the show. Hey, hey. Welcome to the Sci-Fi Sci under the Believe Podcast Network. It's a podcast about black science fiction and fantasy and staying on the same page in our marriage. Today for episode 72 will be a part, we'll be on part two. Let me just freestyle. Today for episode 72, we're going to chunk this book because we got way ahead of ourselves. A patron even ca- caught like, yo, this is a lot of reading. So we have chunked this book Black Leopard, Red Wolf into three separate parts, okay? Three separate episodes. So episode one will cover parts one and two. Episode two will cover parts three and four. Episode three will cover parts five and six. I'm sure I messed that up somewhere. So just like the second chunk, the second third of the book is what we'll be discussing today. Um, So the name of those parts are part three, one child more than six, and part four, white science, black math. Um, If you're like, I'm not reading with you anyway. That's all right. That's okay. Because we're going to make this accessible and fun for everybody. Let's do a quick check in. Because um, it's been an actually not horrible day. I've only cried once. Uh, Vin, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, sorry about the changing of the reading time. About, what are you saying? Like ch- changing because it became too much to read altogether. It did. You love to read. So I it's do. like, it's like, wow, how am I going to read 400 pages in a week? Even though I should have started this a long time ago, blah, blah, blah. We can talk about a lot of factors at play. But at the end of the day. There are things that need to be done, and it's hard to just read heavy, heavy, heavy chunk. Like, this is more reading than I had in, like, high school. Yeah. I mean, and also, so Why, you, you, have a, you have a whole, uh, God, all right, I think I have to feed this dog. Yeah, go ahead and feed him. I'll pause. This is real time, real living. Okay, so Ben just going to go feed the dog. I did. Also, I would never think in my life that I needed more time to finish a book. Never. Yeah. And my full fucking 31 years of life. You know you're about to have a baby, right? I, so yes. So we're going to have to cut a lot of our reading I, in half. I I would find time to read <laughs> if the world was ending tomorrow. I would be like reading. Be that person I Titanic. would be reading while the ship went down, while a meteorite <laughs> crashed into the earth, while we went into nuclear war because Russia invaded Ukraine and we retaliated. I would still be reading a fucking book. And for whatever reason, because of all the things we're doing now, like doing TikTok lives and doing... That's something you opted to do. I know. And doing, you know, your live and me doing improv classes and then me having a full, a literal full-time fucking job. Do your kids listen to this show? Because you definitely uh, press a lot on it. I think... Not that we've I think I had. Ourselves. I have one student who listens, or they probably listen to like one episode. They're, and they said, like, I'm good now. I think they're very, I think they're very confused how I'm very, very different in school. So I'm like, all right, we have things to do. We have to learn about civic life. We have to learn about John Burge and Chicago, you know, police brutality and, and a, you know, the history of policing. And how and are when, you online? What's your online persona? My online persona is very catty, very cunty, a little bitchy. And you think that's different from who you are in real life? Yeah. No, 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 no. I think that's in me in real life. I just, I don't want to be super cunty to eighth graders. Right. I don't want to hurt their feelings. I've started to because some of them sort of need, I think, an awakening. I think because you have to recognize. It's a hard grade. for Well, yeah. And also they haven't, the last full year of school they had was fifth grade. Mm. So so in sixth grade, yeah. they school stopped, you know, in the middle of sixth grade. What happened and, there? And then all of seventh grade, they were gone. So they came back in eighth grade. And a lot of them, I think, need that sort of structure and like rigor and and like directness. And, you know, I'm sort of 
I have to address a bunch of them about plagiarizing. Oh, have they started that game? <laughs> yeah, th- and but also the technology now is so advanced where you can find mm-hmm. it. You can find a, you can find like a thing online, but then you put it into a program. The program will change all the words, but so clearly like. Still not there. Yeah, I'm like this is massacre. You're talking about like police brutality. Like, <laughs> what are you talking? That's a good way. That's a, that's not like that far fetched of a word to use. Yeah, but the the context in which they used it made zero fucking sense. I'm like, you sound like an idiot. Oh, no. well, well, you're you're you just you just tried. you just did something, and you were too lazy to do it. And you know, th- this student knew what they were doing. Like, they knew what they were doing. And I'm tired of them, like, I'm tired of students thinking, like, you know, like, oh, you don't give us enough time. I'm like, well, you know, listen, I don't have enough time to read, so shut the fuck up. Oh, my god! And do your work. I can, like, literally take a sip with this coconut water every time you say the F word. But that's okay. Um, I, it's hard because, pl- damn, you want to do all of that? You got, you. clicking outside of the mic? You brought the Cheez-Its in, and those, those Cheez-Its stick to my gum like your lips to my okay. teeth. Okay. I think that you were all up on my teeth today. You were no, I was not. Oh, I was kissing you. Yes. Okay, get out of the. You were. We're cleaning. not doing were, ASMR right now. I didn't need. I didn't okay. need uh, dental floss today because of your your tongue did. That okay, work. but see, here's the thing about it. <laughs> if you want to take it there, I'm about to take it there in a second. Here's the thing. Sometimes kids actually don't know if like. And, if, and what I'm doing, plagiarizing, or am I researching as you instructed me to do, and then like misquoting someone? I, I think that's what they're gonna say. The only the only okay. problem with that is I explicitly in the out in the rubric was ten points. I'm like evidence includes your personal life. Use use material of the three things that we did in class. You know, like you you could use outside material, but I was like, I want your thoughts, your ideas, and the essential question is like. Um, uh, what is the role of police? You know, okay. like what is the purpose of police? <laughs> You're turning your class into like little activists, yeah. Hey, they're already activists. They're they have a lot. They have a lot of uh, some of them are very you know aware of what's going on. It's great. They just need to learn how to become clear communicators and learn how to write write their what they speak and put it down on paper. And that, I think that's a challenge for some of them. They're they're quite willing to to share their thoughts to the whole class, which is great. I think that's a positive thing. But now they have to learn how to make that presentable on paper or just legible on paper. Don't we all? Yeah, that's, that's the great. Truth. I was going to talk about a weird sex thing, but I'll segue it in later because it feels... It, it doesn't weird. feel like a natural segue here, but um, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Yeah, how um, are you doing? Obviously, I feel incredible because, you know, I got my hair deep. You look great. It took many hours and a lot of your attitude, but we got it did. You told me you're going to be back at 630. Black hair takes time. You are came you back at 12. A, a beautiful black woman on Black History Month? Absolutely that not. That would be a good idea to do. Absolutely not. I, I was trying to procrastinate cleaning the house. You still did without, that. Within 30 minutes of you coming home. No, you, you still procrastinated, so. So we'll move on. <laughs> you, Speaking yeah. of decluttering, I've done a pretty good job at decluttering. Today? Yes, yeah, correct. I'm, I'm filling up bags of things I don't need anymore. And getting rid of them or repurposing them? Because that's... I'm hiding them down in our storage. I'm aware. I, what is with... Just part with No, no. I've, I've, I, par- I parted with a bunch you of stuff. You have a very hard time. I think I think every relationship has a person that holds on to items. I'm talking about couples, yeah. throuples. I have polyamorous friends who are like, yep, one of the five people I date has a hard time letting... Like, what is it about... Yeah, I have a hard time letting you go. No, no, not me. What is it about like dynamics where there's like there's two types of people in this world? People that hang on and cling to items for dear life and people that are like, I need space. Like we got a new baby coming in. Why do you need these old love letters from your exes? Okay, first You're of all, still in love that, with them, no, which I'm fine with. No, there's, a lot, there's plenty Listen, of you to go around. Yes. First of all, there's always someone in the relationship that doesn't know how to uh, take a break and work and just continues working nonstop. You sure. work 10 fucking hours a day, 70 hours a week. Right. So what, please tell me what that has to do with the price of eggs in China. It's, what it are just, we talking about we right now? We all have faults and uh, there's, you so know, we're, and, so, oh, you're and, deflecting in relationship dynamics. There's always one person who might be more faulty of this, which 
In my case, it's decluttering. I am learning to declutter. You need to understand, I've said this before, I've gotten rid of many books and many bookshelves, and I've stopped buying as many books. And when I buy books, some of the old ones that I've read, I give away. Even, you know, the books on the that- On the show. Even on the show, <laughs> we give them away. By the way, the, those who, are like, you're going to read all my notes. I literally write notes in the books, and that's the book we send you. So they're underlined, so it's definitely used book. I want to be very clear. The book giveaway, yes, you're also yes. getting a piece of me because, again... They've been cried uh, and parted I, with. Sure. With, I, I give summer. away uh, pieces <laughs> of my heart that people still have, and I give away parts of you know the books that are also pieces of me. Oh, my gosh. I just think... so. So just to be clear before we jump into this book, my big flaw is that I'm too passionate and your big flaw is that you cling to things like a pack rat. No, I think you're sort of I'm like okay. a I'm you're like a nineteen fifties madman. You know, the ad men who didn't know how to like give away from their job, but like you don't ha you're not white and you don't have a drinking problem and you don't have like side bitches. I don't think I what? Madmen? Yeah, madmen. You know the madmen who like just they were working yeah, you're like a Don I'm Draper. I'm a man in a gray flannel suit. You're like, I would look badass in a great You would suit, look though. like hot. tailored. Yeah, with your little braids. Chanel Monet vibes. Yeah, oh, for sure. Actually, let's do that. Actually, Somebody's you got to come and up a with tailored, that idea and just like, you know, it's a, it's a flip of the trope. Or like a tailored suit while you're pregnant. That could be like a whole take on it. Right. Like Don Draper pregnant <laughs> with braids. <laughs> I just like have this meme in my head. They're like, shoo, shoo. yeah. So if you are, um, you know, watching the YouTube, which you should be every week, you'll be able to see my luxurious twelve-hour braids because yeah. I literally had an inch of hair. Um, I saw you. Her to I saw you scratching your head. We went to go see an amazing play, which we'll talk about, uh, called Relentless uh, by uh, Tyla Abercrombie. Absolutely incredible. It's mm, the, it's mm. um, put on by Timeline, but it's playing at uh, the Wit Theater, which is sort of a, a more classier storefront theater. I yep. think that was our Valentine's Day. Yeah, outing. It was it was amazing. It was fantastic. <laughs> but I saw you scratching your head during the performance, and I went to just give you a little scratch on the head for you, and, and you're like, "Don't fucking touch my hair." Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, because it's still so these are knotless braids so they're they're pretty pain free but they still give a little tinge of pain mm -hmm. every now and then so yeah. it's like i'm aware of how i need my hair scratched yeah. but you're not yet yeah so i don't want you messing up the little i was just trying to rose. connect with you and then rub my belly i'll rub your belly so you can feel your child constantly kicking me oh my gosh i'm sorry about that that i saw it literally i was lying on your belly and the kid, the kid in your stomach punched me in the face because I could feel like just hit my cheek. Like oh. that's my girl. That's my girl. Yeah, we're no, gonna we... give you a run for your motherfucking money, and you ain't got no money. <laughs> Speaking of joke. not having money, we should get a therapist because I know we, we, need one we met with us. an editor, and uh, we be specific about we what met kind with, editor. We met with a, a video editor mm -hmm. to edit our videos, but like our documentary. Yeah, but then it, it it turned into a session for you to talk about some of the things that I struggle with. Right. You know, like cleaning <laughs> dishes all the way, and like completing tasks because my brain sort of works like I'll do something for twenty minutes, and I'll be like, oh, I have a really great idea for a poem, or I have a really great idea for a TikTok <laughs> video, or I have a really great idea for a science fiction short story, or oh my gosh. Um, we have that Michaela Cole book that I want to read called Misfits. Uh, let me pick that up and read that. Or, oh, let me quickly write an outline for the sci-fi side. I think the listeners are getting um, an idea of how like squirrel, many tasks squirrel, squirrel. go unfinished in our house. They, they At go, one point she asked, she's like, do you have ADHD, Ben? No, but, you know, I have it's similar. So ADHD, I think, uh, you know, I've said this before, is that ADHD and anxiety basically have you know, synonymous um, side effects, right? Like they're, it's it's almost impossible to distinguish right. between who has ADHD and who has anxiety. I and so a lot of children are misdiagnosed with ADHD when they're just suffering from anxiety. So I, I have anxiety um, or a little bit of depression when I went to, uh, when I went to a therapist. But yeah, so I, I, I sort of get where you'll work through a task like four hours straight and I'm like, you know, I got to do something else because I just like... Yeah, oh. but sometimes you look back over the task, you'd be like, well, she lost it in hour three and just refused to take a break. Right, yeah. We both have some... 
I, I think we're getting better and better each day about getting on some common ground. But for those of you listening, if you want a little bit of, you know, therapize us for a second, I think our biggest problem is that I'm a control freak and it's very hard for me to ask for help. And so when I do ask Ben for help, it's obviously never going to be done the way that I want it done. Or so, the time. It won't generally won't be done at the time you want it done as well. I, I have made peace with the fact that it won't be done in the same know. time frame. Amber now may have it's made just, peace with that, but Amber an hour later from now may not make peace with that. It's just never the quality that I need it to be. It's like this morning we got into a fight because you... Like, I, I don't even run our dishwasher because I genuinely enjoy, like, the satisfaction of a pile of dishes being washed by my hands. Disgusting. What? I said disgusting. It's disgusting that I like the moving meditation of washing dishes. Or just washing dishes. The food gets all in your hand. I used to do no, it as a it job. It. No, it's you like, didn't. Oh, I did, yeah. For who? For a pizzeria. Okay, well, because you didn't do it at, at the house. Cafe Manja. It's closed now. It's turned into a Christian dance studio. I'm sure it has because you were the dish w- boy. And they probably said, wow, this place is a sea. And so what the issue is, is that I like to hand wash dishes, which, I, which I'm not asking Ben to do. Ben can run our dishwasher, but he won't even like rinse the dishes off sometimes. And then when you put dishes in the dishwasher, they they are a hodgepodge of dishes. Whereas like anybody who regularly loads, it, it, it's like if you ask a child to load a dishwasher, mm-hmm. it's like the tall cups are on the, the top row. And then you can't even really barely close the shit. Some cups are lying, dare I say it, horizontally. <laughs> When they should be lying on the the, the, the little spikes. Um, so it's frustrating because the, ultimately the dishes don't get cleaned. And then he took double the time to do it. Um, so we'll work that out in some therapy. I mean, it's not, I don't know. Are, I'm sorry. Am I boring you? You're no. You're clearly typing on... A computer. You're literally right now on our podcast, not listening to me. I, I know, no. We I, are. You just said in a something. Really good place right you now. just. You just <laughs> look, said something that made me think. You just said What's something up? that made me think. There was. Uh, I think there was a monk who wrote. Here we go. Um, this like meditative book, but the quote in it in it that will always stick with me. He was a dishwasher. He just washed dishes and meditate on God, and then write how he how he saw God and God was in the stillness and he would like look at a cat playing he said he would say you know I see God in the paw of my cat but he he wrote saying that washing dishes was was a very meditative experience so you saying that it just, is. just brought me back to to that um it is so this I think for it was me like called be... the, the cloud of the unknowing sorry to interrupt you no you're fine this this for me is like like what's something that's very meditative for you I guess like going on a run right mm-hmm. this would be yeah. like you asking me to go on a run and then me hopping in a golf cart doing half the run and then going home and then being like what I went on the run with you yeah but I like, I don't require someone else for like my meditative experience so yeah like you do do what you want <sighs> well and once again, here's the point. <laughs> here's how you missed it. Also, I love that you think that um, since this is still a therapy session, last couple minutes here, because we actually did get along today. I love that you consider like washing the dishes something for me. Like that's bizarre to me, right? It's like, well, I did something for you today. I washed our dishes. It's like I wash dishes for the both of us No. Are you okay? You you are. Should I pause the podcast? Because no, you no, are no. fully reading something else right now. Sorry, I just like a rude whole, bitch. I just really wish that cleaning dishes was meditative for me. And I know it's for us. Washing dishes is for us, and I should be more willing to do them, especially because you should not be on your feet as much, kind of thing. So, I'm I'm sorry. So, if you are a maid service in Chicago, um, maybe what we really need is a maid to Stop. just come by once a week. Maybe you know I, I've never had a, a housekeeper before. You have your mom. Um, so I've never had a housekeeper before. I grew up in a home where the children were the housekeepers. But your uh, brother didn't have to clean the way that you and uh, your sister. Yeah, did. but he took that fucking trash out and I mowed that lawn. I took the trash out too to the front porch. And I'm yeah, where Ricky Raccoon and friends 
probably chow down. I on love that thing. I love raccoons, by the <laughs> stop, way. They're stop. the cutest. Sit I want I want a no. raccoon so bad as a pet. <laughs> All right, speaking of pets, talk about uh part 2 of this book. I, I wait actually you know what let's take a quick break yeah yeah we are back uh thank you for letting us air out all of our marital issues so many here on the show uh ben i oh he, i'm for, stroking for, yeah he's stroking, stroking my face for face. the people not uh now don't do too much because you know my so eyelashes beautiful. is very fake um but why don't you talk a little bit about we're gonna get along the rest of the show right hell we're already yeah. getting along i i'm sorry if people are like whoa what did we just walk into um but we do we do something together as a couple to bring us back All together and it is reading yep the couple <laughs> who reads together stays together right mm -hmm. um and we eat a lot of chipotle together chipotle, chipotle. pro tip brush your teeth <laughs> After you eat Chipotle, just in case you want to have sex. Yes. All right. Go ahead, Ben. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> we're on this next part of the book, the the part three and part four. We have our group of oral misfits. Sex, right. Yes, oral sex. Yes. <laughs> just spicy oral, oral sex is not good for... I can comfortably say it's not good for the circumcised penis. <laughs> If you do not brush your teeth after eating chipotle sauce and putting like Tabasco sauce on it. All right. Yep. yep. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. There's so, by the way, there's so much sex in this book. And uh, I got aroused a few times. Yeah. There's like lots of it. And also sexual things that aren't really sexual. Anyway, so you had these fellowship of people. You have like Leopard and you had his little like, you know, uh, his arrow boy, and then you have Fumeli. Fumeli, and then oh yeah, because you can hear everything. Mm -hmm. Then you have Tracker, Track but off. sort of in the middle, they sort of all break apart, and Leopard leaves Tracker, and they have a falling out, and he turn and finds out that the reason that they have their falling out is that. Fumeli is super jealous of Tracker, and then takes this thing called Devil's Whisper and stick it sticks it up uh, Leopard's butt. Mm -hmm. um, and bewitches him. And bewitches him. So for people not reading, that's like you have a good friend and then they have a, a, a newer friend to the group and that friend is jealous of you and your friend's yeah. dynamic. So they're trying to be like, let me, you know, I want this friend right. to myself. And the way you resolve it is by, t <clears throat> you know, putting a herb. Putting a spell on them. A herb. Anally. Anally. Uh, anal herbs. <laughs> This book does everything. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, yeah, essentially, they're still looking for this, like, you know, boy that we don't really know anything. But these parts, we discover that this boy is actually the true inheritor of the kingdom of the north. And his mother, we find out, was this, like, badass, like, awesome woman who was put into a tower and by her like awful, awful brother who sort of has this like sidekick named Aisi, who's this necromancer, evil person who is just... Everybody has a sidekick of some sort. Yeah. Like the, no one's making these like horrible decisions on their own, which is kind of like a metaphor for life. Yeah. Yeah. But there, there's What's so a necromancer? Can you bring Necromancer is someone who is sort of like a wizard, but practices more with like undead and blood magic. Got it. And more kind of, um, the, the term would be like darker, you know, darker magic. More Caught evil. in a necromancer. Sorry. That should have been the song. Okay, Caught cool. in a necromancer. Yeah. Necromancery is the practice of um, the necromantic arts. You know? Oh, defining the word with the word. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So, but... Uh, the the character Liselli, or how do you say her name? I think it's L Lizzie Solo. Lizzie Solo. I'm so. That's the close. sister, right? The, the sister, sister who was locked away. The sister who is mm -hmm. yeah, but she you know rides and fights like any other boy. And at one point, her brother gets so jealous and it was like, if father could, he would cut off my dick and sew it onto yours. Yeah. There's just like a very the gender politics are super intense and. Family, family in here is just, it's not a good thing. There's really no good families. Like every yeah, no family is super, right. super dysfunctional. And even like the, the romantic relationships 
are mostly dysfunctional until Tracker meets Mossy. Yes. And Mossy is like super like light skinned and there's this so whole... So everything is now fixed, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was a joke. Keep going. What do you mean fixed? Oh, because he's... Like, yeah. <laughs> he has lighter skin. He's so like, things... He patches up everything. He and pat- this is and the book just yeah, picks up. Yeah. But it becomes um, very relevant because, mm-hmm. you know, the royalty in this book, outside of Liso- 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 Lizzie Solo, Lizzie Solo, is pretty awful. Yeah, of course, per huge. And uh, and eventually, Mosi joins the group to find this boy, and they find them their way into this kingdom called Dolingo. So Masi isn't just anybody. He used to be uh, a prefect to the king. He's like the third prefect to this king but but he essentially has to like leave that kingdom a prefect is like kind of an aide right it's a no it's a cop he's a cop basically he's a cop. well he's well he's a okay so he's a cop that's loyal to this kingdom and him so masi runs across traka at this like library of sorts and tr- and traka's at this library like trying to find things about this boy in the kingdom and things like that in these writs or something and Masi essentially cop but like you know follows him like a cop or like a detective tracks him down and then almost becomes an well not almost becomes an ally I don't, is it is it weird to let I, I want to give people who are not reading this with us like a touch point so is it kind of like comparable to like Commissioner Gordon becoming cool with the Batman it's yeah. like Except for Commissioner Gordon keeps his job. And in this series, it would be like if Gordon was like, I'm fully leaving the force and joining yeah. forces with you and Robin and everybody. Yeah. So when the um, when the group leaves the Darklands, you know, pursuing this uh, this boy, boy. Who, who's being like kidnapped. Because yes, Tracker's a bounty hunter, if you didn't get to listen to the last yeah. episode. Uh, you find out that they come into this city and in this city, uh, re- you know, l- resided at one time. Uh, I think Fum, Fum, Fumanga. Fumeli. No, Fumanga. He was the the man who was sort of the most intelligent man throughout all the kingdom. And he was this philosopher and he was much loved in this city. And he knew who the true boy, like who, the, who how um, inheritance should, you know, be passed on. Mm-hmm. And so he would write these philosophical or what you call writs to, you know, to challenge the king. Yeah, and it was so he, FB something. I can, yeah, I can, he basically I he basically can. said that, you know, the way that they're passing on leadership from one person to another is not the right way, which is a very like traditional sense of like a king has a son, that son becomes the king. And in reality, it should be the daughter's, the, the king's daughter, the king's first daughter's son becomes king. So it, it would become this like um, sharing of power between, you know, man, man woman. woman, man, woman. And... Yeah. Uh, he and so you know of course the king doesn't like the you know uh, of course the the yeah he bruno the situation he's like you're not gonna like what i'm telling you but this is how it should be right like something again to hearken the, back to encanto you know i'm trying to give people uh, some imagery and also be a part of this discussion with you so it's like mr fb i cannot remember his full name at the moment but he's basically saying like i'm gonna give it to you straight because i'm wise I, I, I know a little bit more. And the king always sort of has a person that he consults like that. Um, and so this this wise person who's giving the king counsel writes these writs and these books and then hides them in this secret library. Yeah. And it's I mean, that's not it. Basically, the, there's intrigue upon intrigue and it's com it's complicated. Mm-hmm. But the big idea is that I think the. Marlon James is challenging this idea of how power is transferred from one person to another. And it's not so male dominated. Yeah. And Mossy becomes this character who is like, the law is the law and this and and this is right and this is wrong. And you discover that, no, he, Mossy as a character has to sort of accept that one, there are things beyond his ken or beyond his knowing. And he has to sort of deal with that. And it's funny because their tracker and Mossy's relationship is very fascinating because tracker is obviously like r- telling this story and telling how fucking annoyed he is by Mossy. But at the same time, they end up having like really great rock and boat sex. Yeah. Eventually. And they have got good banter. I think a lot of people start with like, I don't know. I know it's going to be a good lay if we have like some good banter. 
Yeah. You know, it's just like an intelligence uh, or the, the, the play that we just saw. Like two of the, the lead characters had like really good banter and she's just like very intelligent woman and this guy can like take all her bits and, and dish out his own. And so I think that's the relationship. That's the dynamic you see between Tracker and Mossy. Or and, and you've seen that with track track off. and leopard as well. But then leopard got bewitched because of what, you know, the, the anal spell. And so they lost that dynamic a little bit. Right. Anal spell is like the number one thing. <laughs> uh, also, I think it's this idea that you, someone can be really annoying and you could still want to have sex with them. It's like Which, it's very relatable. You know, it's one of those ideas like an aside it's one of those ideas that you come back to as an adult because you know as a kid you're told like you see that boy over there pushing you on the playground and calling you fat and then being mean to you and and is the reason why you're going home crying every day he's doing that because he likes you that's just <laughs> and you're like what the fuck what that that can't be right and then sometimes like obviously that i, I in my own elementary career that was never true um, oh, except for that one time. You remember that, I told you that one guy in eighth grade gave Who me like gave a necklace a, on the, Valentine's the necklace Day. And I was like, you are literally mean to me every single day. Uh, you talk shit about how I like have full hips at, and that I'm fast. And now you're actually like you've been doing that because you like me. What the fuck is going on? So maybe I don't know. Maybe it's not completely wrong. It's 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 weird. It's we shouldn't learn like that the first people that are bullying and mean to us are secretly in love with us that's horrible distortion of the situation but i do enjoy a nice banter with you and i feel like a lot of people don't understand that um i think like there's people a- on the internet so they're like why, why are they so mean to each other and it's like we love you know roasting each other and talking shit to each other you know i was describing this book to someone as like drag race meets game of thrones yeah just because like the, the library's open yeah. like let's 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 do some reads let's yeah, do some jigs yeah it's very it's the banter in this is very quick very witty it's very um cunty it's very uh you know snappy um it's right. sharp it's the writing is so fucking sharp and mm-hmm. funny as well and then there's this like eh, like oozing sexuality um both sometimes in a very positive way but also the mixture of sexuality and violence happens pretty frequently and i think in ways that i don't i totally understand people would understand as gratuitous i find it as just this is part of the world that you're in you're in a world in which sexuality and violence oftentimes goes hand in hand um, mm-hmm. Very much like our world, our world, I guess. One of the most disturbing parts in this, in in what we've read, is that we come <laughs> to the, the part of Delingo, yes. and Delingo is this tree. You know, think of like people living in trees. So like the elves of the forest, but these um, people, they're like their skin is so dark that it's blue, and yeah, they're so black it's blue. That's that's something that. Like, that would have been an insult during, I don't know. I, like, I've heard my dad insult somebody like that before. Yeah. We, which is what Marlon James is directly, like, right. like, you know, referring to. And they're so, the queen, it's ruled by a queen, and the queen is so taken by Mossy that she ends up, like, calling him in and raping him. Essentially raping him. Correct. Because he's light-skinned, to remind yeah, me. Yeah, so just, like, being aware when you read this that lots of rape happens, but most yeah. of the... The, the explicit scenes of rape are generally wi- like women raping men. Hmm. I didn't consider that. There, I, I think there's a healthy mix of both. But, yeah, but um, health, health as much as you can uh, right, right. have a healthy mix of... Yes. Uh, Marlon James is very inclusive. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> Uh, he is. I was. I was actually thinking that as I wrapped up today's pages, I was like, there are just as many women characters, and they're all just as complex and just yeah. as strong and just as catty and just as heroic as the male or, characters, or, or just and, as villainous. Like and there's, just as villainous, there's a shared that, yes. villainy between all of them, shared betrayal. Absolutely. Correct. Yes. So, and that also, as a as a consequence, like comes to the evil parts of the books as well you're correct yeah i think i was thinking specifically there's references to rapes but the 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 scene in which tracker is raped is explicitly described the scene in which mossy is rape is explicitly described okay i i remember track tracker i thought um 
so so you're referring to the hyenas that yes. rape tracker, but I feel like Nika also raped tracker as well. No, not to keep up with like a log, but something no. happened there as well. Okay, well, Nika betrayed tracker to the um wear hyenas. There was another incident, but I don't. I mean, I don't think it's relevant yeah. to like, the bigger picture. So you can keep going. Yep. But uh, but it turns out that there's no children in Delingo. And the reason children are not in Delingo is that as soon as they're born, they're put into like the walls of the trees and they're, they ha- they're tied up and there's a tube stuck down their throat. And they're basically like grown in these trees. Like until they're there. Yeah, until they're adults. And it's horrific and awful and... yeah. You know, you know what I first thought about when I read that scene? Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting. I thought about, I was like, are you listening to me? I can guess. Do you want me to take a guess? I don't know your thoughts. What book? Well. Yeah. Oh, you were thinking about a book? Yeah. A book that we read? Yeah. And for this podcast? Yeah. Oh, wow. Was it, it, it wasn't as grotesque as what we're looking at here. We've read so many great books. I know, right? Was it a collection of short stories? Mm, no. No. Oh, the Underground yes, Railroad. Yes. Yeah. Well, so there was a city in the Underground Railroad where it, it was like right after they were in like the brutal, brutal South as they moved up mm-hmm. to, I want to say maybe South Carolina. Yeah. Um, they like, the, they, oh, they yeah, were they experiments were growing, being done on the yeah. black people. And there were where no they were, black children. Yes. Yes. And they were mm-hmm. removing like either women's uteruses, uteri. Is yeah. that how you would pronounce that? Um, and sterilizing women. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you're right. Much like we try to do at our weddings. <laughs> Just try to add some lightness there. There's uh, lots of debates all the time on Reddit about like kid free weddings. Like, oh, yes. This is so wrong. Sterilize wonder, children to have a child free wedding. Yeah. Or kid, just kid free everything. I think, I think you and I have been definitely team kid free on a lot of things and I'm, I'm curious to see it like how our opinion of that is going to change i hope it doesn't i think some spaces still should be kid free. yeah not like in an Ho- experimental they're living in trees like keebler elves kind of way like hop leaf hop leaf doesn't r- allow children so i wonder if they put children yeah. inside the walls of hop leaf right and I mean, feed kids them beer shouldn't be at a bar like what then you're right you shouldn't they shouldn't be people adults should have the right to be adults you know right i mean i, and I use the bathroom for sex <laughs> I really think, I mean, there's something to that. Like, and I think in the future we're going to have, this isn't a revolutionary idea. Obviously some websites do this, but even when thinking about like TikTok and some of those apps that are like, you know, it's a free for all for basically people of all ages and whatever. Like, I think we're going to have a separation very soon, like YouTube kids versus YouTube or you know, mm. eighteen and under TikTok versus twenty one plus TikTok because that, think of that like conversation is already happening. Yeah, it has yeah, to be, sure. and I and I I'm here for that because um, you know, I want to be able to watch porn on TikTok. Right. Like, come on, <laughs> why do I have to censor myself? My Ridiculous. ideal sexual experience is like thirty seconds or a thirty second video. Like that's all. You know what I'm saying? So. That's all you have time for. That's all I have time for. That's all I. You know how I am, Ben. It's not a you thing. It's that's not a dig at you. It's, it's just an like, exhaustion. Thing. It's, <laughs> it's like a it's sleepy like, thing. I don't know. It's you like get the your minute, hair done for twelve hours. The but minute I orgasm, sex, I'm like, what about sex over it? ten minutes? <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, when people are like, "Girl, I went hours and hours last night." Like, I'm just not that girl anymore. Like, yeah. also, I'm like, my back hurts. I'm being kicked day and night. Like. I want this to last a solid 15 to 20 minutes. Fair enough. Let's uh, talk Poor about you, huh? whiteness in here. <laughs> whiteness. Why? There are no white characters in there here. Are. Are the white there scientists? are. Of the white scientists? Yeah, the white scientists. Oh, I just thought they called them that. I didn't no, even... they, are, they are so evil that like the the chemicals that they use bleach their skin white and they're they're essentially frankenstein they're dr frankenstein characters and they i don't think that they're white though they are they They, might be like pigment wise white but it's like like i wouldn't call someone with vitiligo white it's like but or albino people are right but he says he's like they're not they look like albino people but they're not albino people that's explicitly said in the book i honestly assumed that they were just black people that had been like dyed or altered to be white no 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 because they're scientists and the way they experiment on children they like fuse like bat they, they fuse like wings and stuff to kids it's oh it's awful 
Why can't those people be black though? The, their skin color is, they're, but they're is not white. white people. They're not white. That's there's what no, there's no white. Too. There's no white people in this book. I know. That's what I just said. Besides the vampire, the vampire, the light. There's a lightning vampire that once it sucks you and turns you over, it causes like blue lightning to fl- like course okay. through your veins. So let's rewind because I think when you you calling it whiteness is it correlates it with white people. There yeah. are no Karens in this book. No, no. But there might be physically whitened skinned people, but they are not white people. But, but he describes it as this whiteness. And right. this And whiteness is being like disgusting and against nature and awful. There's a whole right. character right. who you goes really paid off. Attention. You really honed in on that. I mean, it was the but first time I was represented in the book. In the book. And, okay, why don't, why don't we hear your uh, perspective? No, I just, you, it, <laughs> it was very different then you know i don't i can't see a I, the book flips a lot of tropes right and mm-hmm. so when you talk about the darkness of lord sauron or the darkness of this villain and this sword and sorcery or this fantasy like a darkness that encapsulates everything in the room a darkness that that makes you suffocated but in this he inverts that and describes whiteness in this horrific terrifying like bleached you know you know dysfunctional like cancerous kind of way i saw i it didn't even stick out to me <laughs> but yeah but you felt attacked is what no, you no, say. no i don't i don't i never feel attacked I, I'm like my. You've seriously never felt of, attacked. I really appreciate that about you. Yeah, so white because even their skin rebels against their evil. For there's only so much vileness that your own skin can agree to. White like only the purest evil. The children they take and bind to beasts and devils, um, and they do other things, turning three girls into one girl, sewing tongue to tongue to the boy, so that he hunts like a crocodile, giving him bird eyes. And essentially, they're Frankenstein, but they they are white. They're like Sid from Toy Story. They, yes, but even Bleacher. This idea that you're evil, that you can be so evil that your blackness leaves your skin. Wow. Like, yeah, that was next level. Like the, Marlon James is just a master of words. Master. Mm-hmm. Like you, you can't, literally you'll read things and you'll just stop and have to read it again. Correct. Right? Like there's that whole line where, you know, um, when, when, when you give men power into their hand they turn it into a fist right or he had one where like i think track off and the guys were arguing about like why are we even still fighting this fight like this boy might not even exist like i'm losing his smell and then somebody was like well we need to be stopping the kings in the kingdom and it's like what what is their business with me and somebody said something like why should we when- care why should we care about who's the true king or right something? and yeah. then someone said something to the effect of like when kings fall they fall on all of us yeah. or something oh my god and just how that 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 trickle down and i was like this yes this is this is the stuff that you know keeps us waking up and keeps us trying to like find our little pockets of social activism because mm-hmm. things can and get be, and being very political. overwhelming and obviously you and i have we as as our platform grows i think we sometimes or mostly me because it's always me um get we'll we'll get a little bit of heat about like well don't you stand with the black creators of tiktok on this stance or whatever and it's like i my activism is reading like we all have a lane and and my activism is reading black books and and discussing black art and pushing conversations that way like three six five or even with Black History Month, it's like my thing this week or this month rather is putting these black businesses on. I'm not going to engage in some discourse about some Nicki Minaj Zoom meeting because in the grand scheme of things, it's like who fucking cares? Like, but what does care is like money getting into black people's pockets this month and every month. And it's like or some, somebody tried to call me out on TikTok saying like, why haven't you been putting on black businesses every month? It's like. Well, if you actually listen to the podcast, <laughs> you could patronize the black authors. That way, you know, but I'm not going to argue with them. But I, I do think there's this level of like everybody has a lane and we're all doing our part. And I, I am still doing my part to fight kingdoms, even if it's this small part. And this is a more sustainable way to do it. You know? Yeah. Well, 
Because we talked about that that in our relationship. Like, we Ben and I had a date where we just sat down and discussed, like, you and I aside, like, what are some really important things to you in a relationship, like, in a partner, hmm. in me, you know, as I try to, like, welcome this child into the world, but also, like, maintain this incredible relationship I have with you. And you talked about, like, someone who is aware and in social justice is very important to you, as is for me, you know? Yeah. And so that doesn't come in the form of, like, just popping off, you know, for views and, and when the event comes up. It's like if we're always consistently doing something, I don't have to engage in, like, you know, just, like, the, the fight of, of the week, the Twitter beef of the week, if I just have something steady to work towards. I don't know. No, I, I think, you know, the way you use a social media platform is very different than how a lot of people use it. And I think the way I see social media is oh, if you really want to connect with people, you or talk about politics and sort of change people's political opinion or make them aware is that you do it in a subtle way, right? And I think, mm. um, you know, creating a video that talks about representation instead of being like, you know, there wasn't enough representation at the Nicki Minaj thing, like totally fair, totally get it. You have every right to be angry. But for me to get your voice heard, to make people be more aware of it, you, I think there needs to be a subtlety to it, which yeah. I mean. I mean, You kind of talked about that. Like you talked about just like when we first started dating, like not beating people over the head with facts and information, but almost like, like you don't have to coddle anybody, but like I have never heard someone clearly when they were yelling at me when I was right. wrong about someone's identity or sexuality or whatever. And I've, they've always had to do some like analogy or something a little bit more subtle to be like, consider this insert whatever. Right. You know? And, and I think that's what, you know, um, black leopard red wolf does really well. It yeah. talks about misogyny through the lens of fantasy, right? It talks about, um, you know, um, homophobia. Literally, there's a term called shoga. Found out today, it's a Swahili term that is a derogatory term for um, you know effeminate men or gay men. And he mm. addresses that in the book. Okay, like there are things that Marlon James is doing, but he's not like t putting it within our American context. He's putting it within a fantastical context that then becomes more. Um, I don't want to say palatable because I think justice sometimes. Um, it should not be palatable, but I think it becomes more accepting or it starts the conversation in a way instead of turning people off. And I think there needs to be a very clear understanding that sometimes, like I said, things uh, talking about justice will not be palatable. There are some things that, of course. Um, that I will not talk in sort of beating around the bush kind of things that needs to be said directly. But I think things... Um, On the day-to-day -to, -day to keep my sanity, there there has to be some subtle... There just has to be nuance to everything. Like, I... I don't, I don't hate getting this question, but one question I get a lot is like, well, how does Ben feel about racism? It's like, we are past that conversation. <laughs> like, I, I don't think I can uh, partner myself with someone for seven years who cannot talk about air quote racism. Like, there are like truly varying levels to this shit. And to quote Aquafina, it's, it's layered. It's multifaceted. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, we could talk about, comp, you know, we could talk about racism. I'm, I'm totally like open to that. We don't have that. daily. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm so glad you are. Like if the I just think I'm people like, think. If you want to have that conversation, we can have that conversation. We can have that conversation. Yeah. Good job, like, Aquafina. Yeah, <laughs> I just think like people think I wake up and talk to you about like Malcolm X and MLK. It's mm -hmm. like we are talking about. Well, Mal you know, MLK, yes. Malcolm X. Uh, you love Malcolm X. I, that was a joke. That's like the joke. Oh, like, MLK is like. Is right. Like, you know, it's like there's black history. I like Bayard Rustin more. Right. He's, 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 Remember this morning when you were prepping something from your kids and you were like, I think I'm going to feature Shirley Chisholm today for today's discussion. I was like, they know that girl. Like, talk about some. I, I don't think my students. You know who Shirley Chisholm yeah. is? I don't know. She, they for haven't me, been in school since fifth grade. That's so. true. Oh, that's and true. But for me, she's like tier white. two, tier one. Like, it's yeah. like Rosa, MLK, Malcolm. And then it's like Shirley, Madam CJ, Booker T. Yeah. So maybe get him on some level three. Also at my it's school. It's like all of black history. And then there's like Obama. He's in that. He's in tier two as well. 
I think there's like two black teachers at my school. One wow, of them is really? in preschool and the other one is the school counselor. So we don't have a single so black, black like people in the building. Yeah, there's not. Cuz I yeah. wouldn't call the counselor a teacher. Uh she she run she helps run classes. I think um yeah. So, Interesting. Which, yeah. Which maybe I'm making some I, assumptions yes, about you're making some how assumptions. Advanced. You know, I taught high school, so the girls know Rosa Parks. Yeah. No. Whereas I think, I'm like, you can talk to the kids about Claudette Colvin on the bus versus like a Rosa. Yeah, I, w- I would prefer that. Or uh, talking about Bayard Rustin, we're gonna go over him. We talked about Janelle Monae. Like for Black History Month, I've been doing like a highlighted, you know, person, Bass Reeves. You know, yeah. uh, Bass Reeves was an interesting conversation about you know, prefects, but talking about police and black cops. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's, it's been great, but not to get yeah. too, too far off, no, you're, yeah, off yeah. the topic, I but I, name that for a second, I, yeah. I think like it, it's becomes exhausting for you to talk about race like every day, you know, that's which why is, there has to be varying levels and like it, well, it, it becomes exhausting to talk about trauma and death and horror every day where some days can be joy and some yeah. days can be like, look at that black girl's braids. Like that is a day of blackness. Like every day does not have to be like 12 years of slave. All right. You pop We're, a popcorn. Like every day cannot be that. Cause a nigga will die. But like, also every day can be about talking about palm wine. It could be talking about, you know, this whole book is so it's an African fantasy and it centers yes. African culture and in many ways it explores African American ideas as well. Correct. Uh, and it, but in a way that I think, you know, we don't talk about or explore in here, right? Like it's most of it, the fantasy that is explored or celebrated or given the most attention would be something like the Underground Railroad, right? Which is a great book. We read it, we recovered here, you know, we covered it on the podcast. But I, I think, you know, Black Leopard, Red Wolf did got, in my opinion, and from what I read, does did not get nearly as much attention. Correct. As other books that and deal with, and it's probably with, because it wasn't historical fiction, or because it didn't tackle like, well, well, what do you mean it's an African fantasy? Like, is it is it set in the civil rights movement? Is it set and it's like no, it's otherworldly, bitch. Yeah, and and people the, the, don't like that because it's like, I don't want to see black people <laughs> in these fantastical worlds there's literally lines marlon james is also like writing within the you know african fantasies obviously but also within european fantasy like he knows lord of the rings he knows you know mm-hmm. you know game of thrones and i which frustrates me that book it, that this book isn't like exploding in the way that you know lord of the rings or you know Game of Thrones did. Well, to be fair, Game of Thrones, the first book, was written in 93. Okay. Like, in the early 90s. Maybe we should give it some time. Yeah, so hopefully we don't or have to wait. maybe when Michael B. picks it up. Right. Michael, it'll, he'll popularize yeah, it. I hope so. I mean, it's it's just, it's so good. People need to read it. I, pro- I And I would not have discovered this book if it weren't for you. Yeah. Like, where would I have, I don't know. This isn't the book that you pass when you pass the store. And it's it's sad. Yeah. Whoa, it just got really dark and black just then. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, let's go into some size. I guess, like, the only one I have is that it's hyper violent and, you know, the mixture. I think that's a size. Yeah, I mean, well, depending, I, I would just warn people, like, hey, if you're going to read this book, oh, got it. there's going to be a, a lot of rape and some really fucked up scenes. Like, just be aware. I can appreciate that. that it's your side, but I, I don't think it's a side. Yeah. For I, me. Yeah. I, I would just, for this book, I would recommend it to people with a trigger warning. Agreed. I would like a little bit, I, you know, the visual person in me needs like one or two more graphics in the book. Maybe Mm. a family tree. (laughs) Oh, a family tree would be nice. I I love the glossary at the front and I am constantly flipping back and forth to the front. Um, I don't know. I, Something I really loved, and I know we all fucking hate J.K. Rowling, but something I did love as a child was like the little graphic that was drawn at at the beginning Mm. of each chapter because like when you're calling something the port key, but then you see a boot right there, it's like, oh, this is this means something different. It's not a key. This is just something little like that. And I think 
just something to start each chapter, like the, the, the tree that the children are kept in, just something to sort of like ground me in exactly what Marlon James sees. Maybe that's really like, I don't know, juvenile of me. Um, but I would have loved like one or two, like done by a really dope black comic book artist, yeah. like one or two just scattered well, throughout the book of, of uh, what Trekker is wearing. Cause I'm, cause I'm losing track of the characters and their characteristics. Like I would love just one visual of the moon, witch Sokolon. Um, yeah, but that's, you know, I'm a child. No, no. I think that's a good point. So if you were to read like Dune, Frank Herbert's Dune, they had an amazing artist sort of draw out a lot of what Frank Herbert, um, you know, envisioned at one point. I forgot the name of this artist, but Frank Herbert said, the only person has been to do who has been to Dune is this artist. Oh, I love that. Right. Like, and, and then also if you read Lord of the Rings, um, there are these amazing, like, you know, um, copies, like illustrated editions where there's so much dope ass shit you could illustrate in here to really hire somebody to get that fantastical beauty. And because fantasy literature, especially from this, you know, from, you know, eighties, nineties, even, you know, two thousands has a tradition of like creating these beautiful illustrated copies, like hard cop hard you know hard cover copies mm-hmm. kind of thing and i think that would be something that i think would go together. go really well with especially this. because there's a group of like there's this traveling like band of fighters that they, are they call them a fellowship they, too it's, it's a nice fellowship and i i wish i could like there's this one character called the ogo or said ogo oh. is his name i know all right because he's so sad so, right and so in my brain i'm like okay does this person look like shrek and at one scene and in one scene in my mind, this person gave me like a Hagrid vibe. Mm. Like I would yeah. just love to sort of see this African fantasy. Um, Cause I, I mean, everything doesn't have to be made into a TV show or whatever, but I would like to see what you see on a, on one or two of these things. Maybe I'm for, just for Marlon, losing yeah. my imagination. I don't no, know, no, but no, um, not at all. But I, the don't be- think so. I think, I think people grossly underestimate like that one of the best parts of black panther was the costumes you mm-hmm. know and were the vibrant wakanda colors and so that is so black um like these like very vibrant nigerian prints and guyanese prints and things like that so i would like maybe a little bit more of that infused in the book but i mean his writing brings the characters to life i'm yeah. not gonna lie about that and with that ben being said because you're you're making me dinner tonight right yeah I and guess forgot. what Guess what? I'll clean the dishes. You ain't got to do nothing. My neck is hurting, so maybe uh, I might have to just lie down for a second. Well, with that being said, you why said don't you sad. warp up the show? In conclusion, uh, Black Leopard Red Wolf is sexy as fuck, and the sex is as graphic as the violence. So I feel, I feel like we need more of that. More sex or violence? Both. Ah. I'm just kidding. Maybe just more sex. Make love, not violence. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Read this book, everybody. It's long, but it's worth it. Like me. Whoa. I'm tall. I'm tall, Amber. Thanks, Ben. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Sci-Fi Side Podcast. Up next, I promise y'all, we are about to finish this book, okay? We got 100 pages left. Can you dig it? Please read parts five and six or just listen along with us, and we will see y'all next week for the show. Bye, y'all.